So this is what we're going to go over. Uh, defining anger, of course, um, what pressure and powerless emotions happen and why they hijack the brain. And then what battles do we have inside, which is that um, lots of internal battles. Okay. And, and those are root issues. Those are self power issues. Those are, um, you know, your values. We're going to go over boundaries just a little bit because that has a lot to do with taking back your power and when we're irritable and we feel like we're powerless, we usually don't have boundaries. And then I'll go over some tools. Um, so let's start with this, Aristotle. So anybody can become angry. Like that's pretty easy. We all can be angry. And 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 by the way, anger is a good emotion. All emotions are good. I am such an emotional therapist, emotional focus therapist. I'm very very um, emotionally coaching for kids and. So we have to just know what's going on and that's all. And, you know, the thing about this is it's being angry with the right person at the right degree. That's a really, really poignant point and, and the right time and for the right purpose in the right way. There is ways to do this right. So everyone just doesn't have that power. And so, but everyone can have that power. It really, you really can. Um, you have to have control over your frontal lobes um, and you have to get your back to your frontal lobes. So when we're in the back of the brain, which I'm gonna talk about, we don't have that and we don't do very well with doing the right time, the right degree, the right purpose, the right way. There's time for anger. There, there's reasons I get pretty passionate about, I get angry when things um, are, when people are, um, you know, not treated well or children, you know, my passions. Um, so, so in the right way, the right time, the right person, the right degree. So this is the brain, okay? This is how it works. We have to know this right away. So we have to know a little bit about what's going on so we can go into what it is about irritability. So self-talk. Self-talk's in the frontal lobes. This is all frontal lobe. This is where we're present. In the back of the, the brain, we'll just call it the midbrain. You know, it's the back of the brain where we're in fight, flight, or freeze. I'll talk about that. But this is where we self-talk. This is where we reason with ourselves. This is where we have a reward system. This is where we have logic and emotion together. That's called wise mind if we use them together. That's very important to use both. And we organize. So I'm an organizer. I'm in my frontal lobes all the time. It's called mindfulness. You want to look, you know, you know, familiar with mindfulness. So it's, you have to be, you have to organize your thoughts first. You don't stop. I'm just going to go straight to, you know, some thinking error stuff. We don't stop our thoughts from coming in, but we have to decide if it's a thinking error, what's going on with our thoughts first, because that's the first thing that comes in. Okay. So it starts, the cycle starts there with thoughts, then feeling, and then a behavior. The behavior is what we're looking at. That's what we can control. We don't We don't just stop our thoughts. We don't control our thoughts. We do not control our feelings because our physiological body happens. That's, that is just automatic. Um, it's, it actually keeps us alive. So it's a pretty good thing that we have a feeling and then we have the behavior. Now self-talk is actually the behavior. So if we're still back here, we're like, oh, maybe I should just take a break. Maybe. Maybe it's not worth it today. Maybe I'll talk to my teenager, you know, when it's a good time later. Um, that's all self-talk. Um, and we can go, there's a million reasons why we go into fight, flight, or freeze instead of the frontal lobes and don't self-talk. There's, there's disorders, there's um, burnout, there's impairment. We, we don't self-talk and we're not up here when we're in all those kind of things. And that is my whole thinking errors class that's already on YouTube. And I'll talk about that. Yeah, you know, if you really want to go into thinking ears, which is, remember, it starts with a thought. That's where we have to start is with thinking errors um, 101. And there's thinking errors part two on the YouTube channel. Um, and if you and if you're not familiar with that, it's just Blomquist Hill, all one word, um, Google on, on YouTube and you'll see our, our, our channel that has all of these webinars on there. Um, so thinking ears part two talks about defense mechanisms, which is totally what we're talking about defense brain. 
So we get irritable when we're in defense frame. Okay, so that's lots on that slide, but we'll keep going. Okay, this is another, you know, so remember here's our little, here's our little clue down here. Um, so this is the types of anger. Okay, so we're gonna talk about anger. So there's there's three types. These are the actual definition of anger, aggressive, passive aggressive, and passive. Okay. So the thing is about how awesome this is, and I've coined this, you know, many years ago, and and I this is how I teach it, is that goes along with fight, flight, or freeze, which is our survival brain. I'm just gonna give you a little, you know, 101 on, on fight, flight, or freeze, our PTSD, our post-traumatic, always in the past. Okay, so post-traumatic, when we got bit by a dog when we were five, we now know our brain stores that chemical, which is an emotion, and says dogs are scary. So when they start barking and running at you, you're going to react because that saves and actually like definitely saves our life because we say, oh, that's danger, danger, danger. Um, let's make sure we don't have a dog maul us again or bite us. Um, so our body stores that and it keeps us alive. So five flutter freeze is something that we have to celebrate, but we can't stay in it. It's exhausting to be in the past or the future, okay? So look at this, aggressive, direct, but dis disrespectful. Passive aggressive is, yes, I'm, you know, I say yes, but I really mean no. Super passive aggressive. And that's flee. You're just going to say yes, but then you're going to just not show up to help someone move. Passive, everyone's right, you're wrong. That's what that means. It's like, oh, I'm I'm a doormat, you know? And so a lot of passive scares me the most because stuffers are passive and then you volcano. So when you're a stuffer, you're a stonewaller, you're passive, you know, you, you, you do the same behaviors over your life. And that's also a defense mechanism that you've learned. You will volcano. So that's why um, aggressive, you're just aggressive and you're just an aggressive person in that anger type, but passive shoves it down, shoves it down, shoves it down, and then will volcano, like, you know, a huge explosion. So assertive is just direct with respect. And that's all you need to know with that is three sentences. I feel this way and I need this and I'm willing to do that. That's your boundary lesson right there, how to be assertive with boundaries. That's all you need to know. But you have to know how to, how you feel and you have to know what you need and you have to be, you have to know what you're willing to do. So, but that's where you start is, you know, I feel really disrespectful when you yell at me, I'm going to need to talk to you after our lunch break. And I'm willing to set aside some time to talk when you need to talk, but I'm not going to talk about this right now. So that's, that's it. When you have someone, you know, yelling at you in the hallway at work, you know, it doesn't happen at your company. That's the example I was giving. So, okay, so the clues are the cycle that you're in a cycle is that you, you know, you could have a thinking error. It's emotional. You're having a physio physiological reaction to your body and you have a behavior that's coming. So it's behavioral because that's the cycle. So just know, this is super important to know, you've got to know which uh, type of anger you're, you're having. Um, so you can be like, wow, how do I be more assertive? Because we want to eliminate these ruts. It, it, it's just, you know, for survival, you know, from the dog or a car accident or, you know, running from a bear, they all work, but, but they don't work in relationships. Okay. So that's the key is when we have types of anger in relationships, they don't work. Um, being passive, being aggressive, they just don't work. Okay, so this is what aggressive, this is what can lead to behavior, right? So now we have the thought, the feeling of aggressive or anger, um, hostility, all this mad and danger. I feel, you know, infuriated. I have resentment. I have outrage. I have hatred. You know, all those things are secondary to anger, actually secondary to mad, because I use mad as the primary. So, you know, this is what happens, road rage, breaking the family values um, and rules when you have a payoff, okay? So you, you think you have a payoff. That's when you have a behavior. You break trust, 
you have this manipulative and vindictive. So passive aggressive turns into manipulative, then turns into vindictive. And then actually, I don't have it on here, but the last one that it turns into is gaslighting. So, you know, if you feel like you're being gaslight, get gaslighted or you're gaslighting, go look up that definition. It's like, yeah, very, very um, damaging and toxic. Okay, so real quick, midbrain. So I talked about the frontal lobes, what happens up here, all this self-talk, right? So when we're in midbrain, when we're in irritability to the point past mad, we are not self-talking. We are in the back of the brain. We're flooded. We're having flashbacks. We're ruminating on a story or a thinking error. We have chemicals and genes completely activated. So what happens in the body? Because I'm a body, for, like it's all about the body because your physiological response system, your cortisol levels will spike. So your adrenal glands sends you to the back of your brain, to the midbrain, to the past. Okay. And so your genes actually change and your chemicals in your body actually change. That's, that's, that's what happens with our breathing, our lungs, our blood pressure. I mean, everything changes and it actually can change a gene. It's crazy. So how do you survive, you know, with, with this going on? Well, it's a survival stress response of course like i said it saves our lives but it's it's not good to stay in we have to get back to reality to the present to be able to move out of it and that's where we have to go back to the frontal brain okay there's ways to do that a little bit on chronic stress okay so this is um the the one of the biggest reasons of what's going on is if there's acute stress, short term, it's about a month adjustment. Okay, six months. We had six months of COVID and we're like, oh, okay, now we're in an adjustment. We're in full six months when we hit the six month mark. And then we just went to post traumatic. It was more than six months, it was a year. And so we just stayed in that and it's long term. And so what happens is we just stay in autopilot. Okay, that's what's going on with road rage. Do you know that accidents increased? I have one statistic that accidents increased 300% from the year before, and there was less people on the road. So tell me, we're not present. We're in like auto, right? We're just in this auto, like autopilot that just sends us into this very non-present place. Um, and that's what this is. And we're in loss, grief, and trauma, okay? And if we're in powerless, we're in, you know, a crisis because the problem with, with stress is it's unseen usually. Okay. So we don't know what the future looks like. We don't know the unseen. We don't know what's going to happen. So the unknowns and unseen send us into this, you know, chronic stress. And that sends us into burnout, um, which is a whole different PowerPoint and lots of, you know, talk a lot about burnout and balance and boundaries because then we don't have boundaries and then we just keep running out. So a little bit of that. So that's a little bit of what's going on. Okay. So this is, this is, this is how we get hijacked. Okay. So we don't, we went, we don't want the chemicals to hijack our brain because that's what sends us into rage. Okay. So this guy's mad. That's a primary emotion. A secondary emotion is, you know, is frustration, insecurity, jealousy. And some of those secondaries keep going into outrage and resentment and loneliness and worthlessness. We're just not insecure anymore. Now we're worthless. Um, and we're not just jealous, we're annoyed and hurt. And we get into deeper rooted issues. So resentment is one of those huge rooted issue, which happens in marriages, which I do a lot of couples therapy and a lot of conflict. <laughs> so it's like, Okay, what kind of resentment do we hold? Okay, so there's some of those things that we can write down. We'll do a little, you know, if you've got paper and pencil, go get something to write down with now so we can kind of go through some of these things. Because it's like, as you're going through this, it's like, which, where's my outrage at? What level? One to 10, 10 being very high in your SUD, 
It's called, we always rate our emotions. So we really know what's going on. And by the way, the brain needs clarity first. Then we need to connect the dots. Then we have control. And then we can actually you have closure. So it's in that stages that it has to happen. So first is clarity. This is why I always educate at the beginning of these PowerPoints because you have to have clarity first. So where's your resentment coming from? I don't know. There's a million reasons. It's not where it's coming from or why, it's just what's going on. But what is your resentment? What is happening when you feel worthless or when you feel annoyed or hurt? And then it's like, okay, where's where, where am I burying these feelings? They're buried and they're unresolved. And, um, and then we have a belief system that goes behind that. Um, Crucial Conversations talks about that. It's a book. One, it's in my top five books. It's it's one of the best books um, that you can check out for having a crucial conversation. And Crucial Confrontations is is by the same authors. Um, there's like five of them, so I don't know. I'll, I don't. I don't. I never memorize those ones. I don't know who write, writes them. Um, but they're. I think I have a reference in the back of this um, PowerPoint. So. But the point is you got to get to the root, reduce the stress and the sickness because chemicals inside the body, it will, will cause sickness. And um, there's really only two chemicals that produce the change in your body, love or fear. There is only two chemicals that are produced. It's either out of love or it's out of fear. So write down what hijacked emotions what, why does fear hijack love? Well, it will, if you've got severe root issues of trauma, of loss, grief, resentment. Um, and we'll talk about some root. Well, I have a you know, PowerPoint uh, slide on that. But look at what's buried, okay? The whole point is what's buried in the root keeps getting stronger if that's not treated. That's what we treat is what's in the roots. So if they're buried, yeah, you got to get to the root issue. Um, change, just the word change. I did a whole estate for the state of Utah. I mean, thousands and thousands of employees, right? Um, and it was just a, a workshop on change, like how to flow with, you know, thrive in change. Change really is really hard for children. Um, their brain reacts and they will have severe behavior. Um, just as getting their shoes on to go somewhere because they didn't expect that change. Um, change in schools, change in all those kind of things, lots of loss and grief that happens in change. So think about all the changes that we had this last uh, year and how we're going back to, you know, the, the normal, if whatever, whatever normal was um, in, in going back to, to back to those changes that we had. So here's a miss about anger, just anger, okay? It's inherited. No, it's not. There is no hair inherited gene. Your environment is inherited, okay? But your genetics in anger is not inherited, okay? Anger leads to aggression and rage. No, it doesn't. Anger, like I said before, is a, is a good um, secondary emotion from that, and it's okay. It's okay to be angry. But how can we do it the right way, the right place, the right passion with the right person? And anger gets what you want. No, it doesn't. Um, anger is not a habit. Yes. So what happens is anger adds to neural pathways in the brain. And you have a way that says, just like the dog, right? You were bit by a dog. So your brain stores that in your neural pathway says, when you see a dog, you know, barking or hear a dog barking, you're going to activate that feeling in that memory that's stored. So it becomes a habit of fight, flight, or freeze, right? Um, so it's, it's all a habit. It is because it's a neural pathway. It's a brain thing. So anger is a primary emotion. That's a myth. I put it as, and a lot of other ones, um, it's a secondary. We're just mad. So a kid gets mad, we get mad. Okay, that makes me mad. But anger is deeper, like I said, and then it goes into rage resentment, outrage. Yeah. Um, venting anger physically is therapeutic. We used to teach in parenting 
to have your kiddo go punch the pillow when they're mad, um, that is shown not to be therapeutic at all. It actually activates and continues it making a habit. So we wanna do other things. And that's in my other PowerPoints about how to self-soothe. Um, there's one that I just did on a child, like how to help your child self-soothe and how to emotionally regulate that's on there. And for adults in the YouTube channel, um, there's emotional regulation in um, emotional intelligence part one and emotional intelligence part two. So if you wanna get more emotional intelligent, which is actually scientifically more important than your IQ, then you can watch those, okay? Okay, everybody doing okay. So values, okay? So why in the world would I talk about values now? That's a good question. You can chat me and ask me, um, but I'll tell you. Because everything is with your time, energy, and money. So time, energy, money is everything that drives us. And those are your values. So. If you're not, you're like, my value is not to do road reach. I have a value of integrity. So behind closed doors, I do what I'm going to say I'm going to do and do what I do. And, you know, it's like, and family and open-minded and respect are my values. And, and so, and being committed, you know, okay. And then why all of a sudden you're road raging, you know, and you've never road raged before, for example, or gotten irritable at work. Um, I don't know, but something's going on with your value system in not being present and not being satisfied with something. So we have to look at your um, satisfaction of life and your values. And that's where some people shift. They go to therapy, they read some self-help, they do a shift in their life of like, what am I doing? What is my energy like it is? And that's the question you have to ask yourself, where is your energy? Is it in the back of the brain in survival mode all the time and fight, flight, or freeze and autopilot, which is exhausting. But at the same time, if we didn't have some autopilot, we would be even more exhausted. So, you know, like learning how to start our car and drive it, that's autopilot, which saves us a lot of energy. Um, but when we go drive and then we're just an autopilot and we're not present, um, that's more exhausting. So here's our root issues. So as I talked about, so, so this is a tree. So this is uh, something that you can do all the time. You can draw it, you can write it, you can do it daily. Um, can you hear me now? Everybody can hear me, right? Okay. You can hear me through the whole thing. Okay, make sure I zap out. Um, Okay, so the, the leafy issue is a temporary seasonal year by year, maybe, maybe a couple of years, but we don't want it more than that. I mean, a failed relationship, a financial issue, junk values, I'm going to talk about addictions, thinking errors. So just some anger, um, that's a leafy issue. So those leaves can fall off and feed the root though, if they keep growing back right? Here's my analogy, right? If they keep growing back, you know, um, it's like where we haven't fixed the root issue. Do you see what I'm saying? If your financial issues keep on coming back year after year after year, after you went bankrupt, and then you just, you know, you keep on with the same habit, you're going to have a root issue. So, and the failed relationships or the continuous toxic relationships without boundaries. So your leaky issues, you don't have boundaries. Okay. Um, and then the people that, you know, are toxic aren't following your boundaries. That's a, that's a whole other class. It's one of my most popular. Um, but here's the secondary emotions from those emotions that come from failed relationships or financial issues or feeding your junk values. So that's fear and resentment and betrayed and hopeless and just in rot stuck, you know, so, so I feel inadequate. So those are the trunk and that keeps feeding the root, right? So here's the root, self-concept, abandonment, shame, denial. There's some definitely, so I, I put abandonment in there, but it's really attachment disorders. 
So there's there's three different kinds of attachment that comes out um, in root issues. So you know you've been abandoned, you have attachment issues, you, you're in complete denial, disassociation. You know, yeah, you're you're in some serious defense mechanisms, which goes into shame. You have chronic health or mental health, chronic mental health issues that keep you in the root. That's why those things down there have to be treated. They have to be treated with therapy. I'm super biased. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, it is a couple thing. It's a family thing. It's an individual thing. It all has to be treated. If there is developmental relational trauma, you, you know, that has to be treated, you know, with trauma treatment. So that's a little bit of that. So young values, um, we'll talk about. So if there's junk values in your leafy issue, you keep on feeding the junk values, which I call my donut. My, we'll just be funny for a minute here. Let's have a break. So junk values is like feeding my, my, my donut craving. They're gluten, deep fried chocolate, sugar. What else could be better? Nothing on the planet. There's just donuts and then there's donuts. You know, there's a few things on the planet, but not really. And I'm like, if I feed, if I go to Costco and I pass the six pack or 12 pack of donuts, I'm in trouble if I pick those up because if they're on my counter, they're going to be gone three in the morning and three at night. And so I just have to like have a plan ahead of time so I don't get a six pack, especially those powder ones at the grocery store with jelly in the middle. Those even kill me. And I want to say it's been since I had a team meeting, you know, with Blomquist, you know, I had a donut. Oh my gosh. And yeah, doesn't do well on me. So I have to decide what's worth my junk values or my treasured values. And I will feed, literally feed, which one, right? And so it's, it's, it's self-discipline. It's so difficult. But this leafy issue has to start with self-discipline. Um, and your thinking errors in stopping your rage, getting out of control, it really does. But if there's root issues that are deep, eh, good luck. It doesn't work that way. You just don't just stop, you know, having your leafy issues um, if there's deep root issues, which most of us have, right? We don't have trauma. Okay, so how do they grow? So here's the irritability, stop denial, overwhelm, emotional numbness. And if you're emotionally numb or raging, you've got to watch my emotional intelligence one because that's, you, you've got to understand what's going on. And fatigue burnout, like I talked about, burnout is huge. We are a burned out Americans. When I do statistics, all about America. I mean, we are a burned out people. We don't sleep well. We have lots of shame. We have, you know, just that's going on. So that's what's in the root. And then here's what, how you combat that. You connect with the unharmed. That means that you find parts of you that's unharmed. Like I find the parts of my body that don't hurt, you know, after working outside or, you know, and then it's like, okay, I have to connect with those parts and be grateful for those parts that are unharmed. I have to connect with my unharmed emotions, my body, my mind, my soul, um, holding on to holding the hurt um, is just sitting in it. It's like, wait, we're not supposed to hold the hurt. Yes, we are. You're supposed to sit in your hurt because stopping it, remember, is a volcanoing situation. So you got to hold the hurt and you got to connect with the unharmed, but then you have to hold the hurt too. So loss, grief, and trauma is severely connected to irritability. Um, I just saw a statistic brand new 80% of Americans, their number one complaint that's happening to them is brain fog, is being unfocused. So if that's happening, I should do, I could do a whole workshop on that. Um, we're very unpresent. We're not in the present. We're not focused in the moment. And so if we're holding hurt, we're in the moment. If we're connecting with our own harm, if we're being compassionate, courageous, and connected, that's that's some Brene Brown, you know, her courage um, uh, book, you know, talks a lot about courage in all of her work, um, but also talks about connection. It also talks about, you know, where we get our courage from and how to do that. 
how we release shame, because she's a shame researcher. And then how do we gain back our power and find ourselves grounded again? When we're in thinking errors, you're not going to be grounded. You're not going to be balanced. So that's, you know, like see which one, which side you're on, right? So, oh, I'm depressed and anxious most of the time. I'm fatigued. I'm burned out. I'm in shame and thinking errors. Um, I, a lot of overwhelmed feelings. Okay. Well, how do we back up? You can look at this side and pick one. I always just pick one. Don't get too overwhelmed. Just pick one. Just be like, okay, I'm overwhelmed. Or I'm in stuffing and denial. Okay. So how do we, well, you know, you connect with your unharmed or you, you know, get into the present um, with your denial. Okay, so there's some more, okay? But I um, added this one in because I, I didn't wanna, um, um, okay. So, so this one has the ones in the middle. So I just added this one in because it's like, okay, reactive versus proactive. So it's like, how do we get proactive? These are all the P's that go with proactive, okay? We play, we have power, we pace ourselves, we have passion. Okay, so let's have a little story. Um, so I talked about junk values and treasured values. So I, I took the term junk values from a book called Lost Connections. And he talks about junk values. And then treasured values is what we actually find. Um, we, we find that, okay, what is, if, if our value is not being as irritable with people and stepping back to be and taking a breath and, and being more mindful and being more present, then we have to start feeding that value, okay? So of course you can decide, you know, I always do the gray wolf and the white wolf because it's it's an old Cherokee um, story about the grandson going to his grandfather and saying, hey, grandpa, what's what's going on? I mean, how how do I feed, you know, which wolf? The anger, the irritability, the tension, um, or the treasured values of um, passion, courage, compatibility in, in work and in relationships. So you can put whatever you want in those values. And the point is, is whatever you feed will come out. So when you're feeding, when you're feeding the wolf, um, that's, that's what you're going to get. So if I'm feeding myself donuts and I like, I call it a screw up moment, but not really in, in my substance abuse, when I teach this all the time, my substance abuse classes, it's an urge that is a relapse. So when I relapse and feed my junk values, then it's a relapse. It's a screw up moment. It's like, it's like, I'll feed my donuts and I'm just going to eat them all now and get this over with. And then I'm sick, you know, and you're like, Oh, and then you shame yours. It's just a relapse. Same thing. Then it's like, what is it that we we think that that's our reward system? So a lot of our junk values is what we think is our reward system. So in America, we smoke it, we drink it, we eat it, we buy it, and we watch it. We got Netflix, right? So nothing against Netflix. Don't don't send me hate email. Just kidding. So. But we do those five things excessively and we feed our junk values and we think that that's our reward system and it's actually, actually not our reward system. So yeah, yeah, it's a great story and metaphor. I add to my own little, you know, junk values of like, here's, here's the junk values, here's the, um, here's the treasured values um, added to the, the old story, therapy story, so. And those are actually the battles within ourselves. And by the way, when we have battles, um, so if I have a battle about eating donuts after I bought them or after I ate them, I'm gonna have conflicting value systems inside of my body and my brain, my soul. And I'm gonna be like, fight, 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 fight against myself. And that's your internal battle. Okay, so this is one of my favorite because of a, you know, there's some windmills that are my favorite area. Um, so it's like, how do we feed our new outlet? And then 
how do we feed our junk values or how do we feed our treasured values? How do we choose? That's a little bit of work, okay? That's a little bit of work, but you, you, um, Brene Brown says, how can we expect people to put value on our work when we don't value ourselves enough to set and hold uncomfortable boundaries? So number one thing is I have to have boundaries. Like I said, if I go into Costco and I say to myself, and I'm, and I'm in a really, you know, mood, I'm, I'm bleeping myself out. So if I'm in a mood, it's like, you know, I'm going to buy more chocolate. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy more sugar and I'm going to go home and have a moment, you know, but if I go in saying, okay, this is, this is a health, I'm going to feed my treasured values. Like I do, I eat, you know, good. I want to do this. This is, this is more long-term, right? This is long-term treasured values. Then I'm going to have more boundaries. And those are boundaries within myself. Okay. Within myself. Oh, good. Yeah. Cause I have the, see, uh, someone, uh, if you want to look at the chat, there's, there's a link to it, which I have put in PowerPoints before instead of me explaining it in my own way, but yeah. So you can just look that up. I have a nice little, um, I have a picture of it and the saying, and you know, the same way, it's probably that same length of like the two wolves on the side. I actually have a wolf right here in my, in my office. So I'm reminded of my treasured values. I don't want to value anger and irritability. I don't want to displace, which is a defense mechanism on my family. I don't want to be mad because the boss yelled at me. So I went home and kicked the dog. That's displacement. Road rage is one of the worst displacements that we do on a complete stranger. But then we go home and do it to our family. Tell me what's going on with that, you know, that we can't hold our own so we can hold our own boundaries with others and how we treat people. And this is why here's boundaries. I don't do, uh, there's some, there's several um, things that we got from who knows where, from the past generations. One of them is never go to bed angry. And you can chat me, please help me with what you think is wrong with that statement. I actually despise it. Don't ever go to bed angry. That was the advice from our grandparents. You can tell I really love it. I'm being so sarcastic. So worst advice ever. Just go to bed. Do not have domestic violence. Domestic violence happens between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. The majority of it from 10 p.m. till 6 a.m. And I'm a domestic violence certified counselor. And it, you tell me that it is not a problem in Utah. We are always in the top five for the top murder suicides in Utah for domestic violence. Someone you knew, someone you know. You hear about them on the news. We're very, very high for that. So why just don't go to bed um, when you're like going to rage, you've got to go to a separate room, you know, but we can't just, oh, don't go to bed angry. So stay up all night and fight about it and fight with your team or it just doesn't work because that's a battle. So boundaries, if you have boundaries, that's no battle. That's the other statement I despise is pick your battles. No, don't pick your battles. There should be no battles. It's just boundaries. If you have a boundary and then you, you know, set it. And actually next week I'm doing boundaries part two next week. So you can tune into that one on Blomquist Hill um, website. We always have the workshops that are coming up that you can join live. So know your value system. Okay, we went over that. Know your secondary emotions. We went over that. Be present, we went over that. Give yourself permission, just give yourself permission. Go by patterns, not potential, okay? You, that one's, a, that's a mind blower. Seriously, like go by patterns. We can't go off potential. This kid will finally do this. This kid will, or my spouse, or my husband, or my boss, or my, oh, no, go off patterns and have a boundary around that pattern. Well, the, the what I know is your pattern is this. So I'm going to need to put a boundary around it. Know your self-care, okay? Your self-soothing. Know your values have been crossed. So if you know your values up here, number two, then you go to eight and you're like, oh yeah, I know when my boundaries have been crossed. Don't apologize. 
for your boundaries or your rights. Okay? Don't do it. And there's a book in the back of this PowerPoint um, by Harriet Lerner called Why We Don't Apologize. It's a great book. And Dancing with Anger. So she has two of those that are my favorite. And then 10. All it is is repeat and rehearse and repair. I should put repair on there, but I did. So it's always about repair. The only thing about this that you need to remember is we're going to screw up. We're not going to be perfect. And I don't want you to be perfect. I want you to be imperfect, Renee Brown says. So, so I want you to repair. Also, Gottman, John Gottman always says in his research shows the same thing. It's about the repair. It's about when we screw up and we don't do a boundary or someone violates our boundaries or we violate other people's boundaries and we know it is to repair that. And that is tomorrow at three o'clock, we need to talk about this. We need to have hot topic time. We need to, I feel and I need and I'm willing to do state. And this is not okay, but I'm not gonna talk about it. Right now. So, and then you repeat it and you rehearse and you repeat and then you repair it. And if the other person can't repair it with you because it takes two people, um, that's, that's boundaries part two and that's tough. So these are just, Six types of boundaries, just read through those. This is why we have boundaries. Now, of course, my tip here at the bottom says pick one category and improve it over the month with your relationships. This, why are we talking about boundaries? Because this is going to calm down your anger, irritability issues. If you have power, if you feel powerless, we're in the back of the brain. This is power, this is powerless. So when you have boundaries, you have more power. Simple as that. So pick one of these categories. If you're materialistic, you give away your money and you don't, you know, people owe you money and you family members and you, yeah. Then time, time's a big one. People don't have lots of good boundaries around time. So people violate their time. Um, so just pick one that you need to work on and set up a boundary around that. Okay, so this is how we prove the moment, a little bit of, Imagery, meaning, prayer, relaxation, one thing in the moment, vacation, encouragement. So these are things that you can do. What? So there's lots of imagery stuff that you can download. It's just mindfulness, body image, um, body imagery. I mean, um, imagery with breathing, um, lots of different mindful activities, um, prayer meditation, relaxation, right? Just, just actions of relaxation. One thing in the moment is just like, okay, what's one thing in this moment right now? Where do I see? What do I hear? Your five senses. Um, people have a vacation planned yearly ahead of time. On average, it lives six years longer. Um, if companies would make sure that people take their vacation time, you know, <laughs> uh, give them the reward system that they deserve, um, people actually are way more productive and live longer literally so okay so here's a little practice love not fear and and when we send out this powerpoint we can send it out to your company and you can go through this powerpoint later and the the video okay so we're going to get tips and then we're going to go through some questions or comments or anything that we need to go through there so here's some tips to reduce conflict anger whatever it doesn't matter it, it's all the same it's how to step back and get into your frontal lobes. It only takes scientifically less than 10 minutes to do a severe, if you're like in a nine out of 10, to get back to a two, you know, and where you're really self-talking and you're back to a lower rate of emotion, it only takes 10 minutes. And there's lots of 10 minute activities that you can do while you're in that timeout. But the rule is take a timeout 10 minutes to 24 hours. Um, make sure that happens in work meetings, in your relationships, um, for yourself, you just take 10 minutes, just drink something, sit down, breathe, eat something, write something down, any of those things. Um, there's aggressive aerobic exercise. We'll do that. Hot and cold, um, ice cubes in the hand, something on your neck that's cold or hot. We'll do that. It will completely do a state change. Um, and if you want more on those 10 minute timeouts, it's called anxiety tools. 
And I just did that like last month. And there's a whole bunch of 10 minute ideas on how to reduce your anxiety in 10 minutes. So thinking errors we talked about, thinking error 101 is one of the presentations already on there. Stay present, don't jump to conclusions. Jumping to conclusions is a thinking error. Find out what's really going on in your root issue. We talked about that and your secondary emotions. So seek to understand before you're understood, Tab of five and Stephen Covey. Um, the logical impact is back to those frontal lobes I was talking about in, in logic and emotion. So when you can write down pros and cons, that's how we reduce conflict immediately. Let me take five minutes and write down some pros and cons to this decision or the, the more brainstorming that we need to do and then make it a win-win if the business still. And if it's not a business still, if it's not a win-win, you know, then, then it doesn't work. Then your boundaries are, you know, hold, hold your boundaries in, in that business still a win-win. So if it's a lose-lose or a lose-win or, you know, a loop, you know, it just doesn't work. But how can you get to that conclusion? You, you can with every kind of mediation that you do in anything you do, you can always get to a win-win. I believe that it does take two people, but you can get to a win-win of, I won't pass my boundaries. So that's a win-win. And this person's holding their boundaries. Okay, that's a win-win. And you, and you conclude to, you know, disagree to agree to disagree kind of thing. So there's the, the website for um, the Blomquist Health videos. And let me see if I went through most of these books. Um, they're always on a lot of my PowerPoints and on my own website. Um, Visual Conversations is in there, Buried Alive. Those are your feelings. Buried Alive, Body Keeps the Score, that's a trauma book. So if you have severe deep trauma and you have irritability from that trauma, then that just means you're going through grief again. So grief is one of the anger cycles. So um, yeah. Seven Habits, uh, Rising Strong. So there's a few books for you. Okay, anybody have um, some comments and some wrap up here? We'll turn it over to, to Mike if, you know, if he wants to. Well, sometimes people are just quiet. I was on a meeting earlier and they were just so quiet. So I guess it's just a quiet Wednesday. <laughs> it's the middle of after the fourth, you know, you know, everyone's like, yeah. I know. Well, thanks, Carol. I appreciate you doing this for us. Uh, I, Mike, I, have, uh, I have a question, Mike. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So sorry, someone came in my office in the middle of this. So I caught the very tail end of the boundary section. I'm wondering if you'd be able to just give me a, a quick snapshot of that section again. Yeah, so this is like a list of why we do boundaries and then what boundaries, the categories boundaries are. And so of course the, the, the reasons why we do boundaries because we don't wanna battle is we need limits and protection and communication. And we actually, it actually deepens and preserves relationships and people are like, when I do this, I had a question like, why would boundaries preserve and deepen relationships? Well, we know that they don't deepen relationships if you're passive, right? They don't. So, um, so these are the six types of boundaries, the categories, um, physical, emotional, sexual time, you know, and then I, I just said, you know, pick one and improve it over the month. And then, um, you know, this is where we have to be assertive. So the point is opposite of aggression is assertive, exactly. Assertive is respectful and direct and aggressive is disrespect and direct, but you're disrespectful. So if you're really direct. So that's why we have to go into boundaries um, because we have to be assertive instead of. So are you saying like, uh, the six types of boundaries is that we have an issue with with that or yeah our so if you have like that yeah if you have emotion so if you let so if you don't have emotions you don't have boundaries around your emotions personal feelings and limits that you sh to share um like you're you know you're vulnerable but you're too vulnerable you so you're so like you know you you know that person always vomits everything on you emotionally and you're like, mm -hmm. 
wow, you don't have any boundaries. People have to earn the right to hear your story mm-hmm. and your emotional boundaries. So, so if you need to kind of like, Hey, how do I do that? How do I just share personal feelings? But the vulnerable being vulnerable, but with limits. So then you work on your emotional limits of, of with people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you just pick one. Yeah. Whatever you're struggling with in those, in one type of boundary. Okay. And then, um, let's see. Yeah. So Heather, I mean, Heather is not in here right now. Yes. Gia says, yeah, that there is a, um, yeah, there is a boundary and versus, um, balance in the workshops that talk just about boundaries and then how to get balanced with it. Let's see, um, I should call it, yeah. So yeah, have any of your kids, most of my PowerPoints that are already on there, I try not to swear so kids can watch them, but it's like, there's tons of them. There's suicidality, there's depression, there's anxiety 101, um, there's bullying. The bullying one is a version of this for kids. Why are we displacing and bullying on each other in the house? I have tons of kids coming into my office and siblings doing that. So, yeah. So when your kids watch the bullying one, it's so good. I mean, it's like, it's so needed. I'm telling you this year, I've never seen so much bullying going on everywhere. So yeah, we're all irritable. You're not the only one, Mike. Okay, so let's turn it over to Mike now. I'll, I'll Thanks, Carol. Thanks for your questions, guys. Uh, so just a few things. So upcoming, if you look at the upcoming events on Usanaverse, it does have the link um, for Carol's presentation on boundaries uh, part two for next week. So click in there. You will, If you do want to attend, be sure that you register 15 minutes prior um, to the presentation so you can get in on that. So Anytime from now and 15 minutes before that presentation, you can get in. Um, and uh, yeah, just watch for that. Also, starting on Monday, Amy Vernecklis will be doing mindfulness sessions again, starting at 3 p.m. in the yoga room. Um, so please come and join us for that so we can uh, all work on being present and, uh, and practicing that. Um, but for those of you that are looking for points today, the keyword today is going to be improve. So uh, Carol, thanks for sharing that one with us. And I love how you talked about vacation. Go and take vacation. <laughs> yeah. Utilize it. We have a lot of great vacation options. So uh, um, lots of time for you to use. So go and use it. It is so beneficial for, for our health to get away from the office yeah. and get out and have vacation. So. One Thank tip on you. that, it's, I call it mini, you know, your daily vacation. This is the rule, a time minute vacation every day, one hour a week is your vacation, you know, and then um, 24 hours a month and 48 hours a year by yourself. I usually do two hours a week. So yeah, by yourself, that's vacation. Like it's a reward system, whatever your vacation wants to look like. And it can be pretend. Oh, but not the long. Do <laughs> your daily ones. Yeah. Joel, thanks for the tips, Carol. I appreciate your time. And uh, everybody, have a wonderful day.